Hey everyone, Nick Dearbert is here teaching you financial modeling. And today we're gonna to talk about the depth of a financial model and extending a simple retirement model in Excel. So we started out in this class with a very simple model to work with, just a very basic retirement model that most people would solve on a calculator. And you know, part of that was so that uh, you know, we can focus more on the modeling part rather than having to know any, you know, complex finance concepts to get started. Uh, but the other reason was to really highlight just how complex the world is um, and that even a simple model actually uh, can become very, very complex once you really try to bring in all the particulars of the real world. Uh, and so with every model, there's always a trade-off. Uh, you can keep making it more and more realistic, and that makes it more and more complex. And so you ultimately have to make a decision about you know, what you're using the model for, how accurate does it need to be, uh, for how much you're going to really try to get close to the real world. Ultimately, the real world is just too complex to be able to model every single aspect of the real world and so ultimately we're always uh, making some simplifications to make our lives easier and uh, keep the complexity of the model down um, so we're going to just extend this uh, retirement model that we've been working with already ultimately solving basically the same problem but trying to get at some more realistic assumptions going along with that. So when we break down any model, uh, it has a few conceptual parts to it. So uh, we have the equations, the logic, and the assumptions going into the model. And really the assumptions are the base of the model. Once you decide what your assumptions are, then you can go and figure out what the actual logic and equations involved in the model are going to be. And those assumptions uh, are really where we're thinking about, you know, how close do we want to be to the real world? What do we want to assume to make our lives easier uh, and make the model less complex uh, so that we can actually get to the solution in a reasonable amount of time? And then once you've decided on you know, these are the things uh, that I'm going to assume, then out of those assumptions, you can create these logic and equations which actually drive the model. Uh, and so, you know, we already built out this very simple retirement model where we just said, you know, this person has a certain amount of desired cash. Uh, we wanna know how long it's gonna take to retire. They can, you know, save a certain amount each year and they invest it at a certain rate. Uh, how long does it take? Um, so when we're thinking about the more general question of just how long does it take to retire, uh, simplifying it down to the problem that we looked at last time, there were actually quite a few assumptions that went into that. So let's break that down a little bit. Uh, so we see uh, a few assumptions here on the slide. One here is that the salary is constant over time. And, uh, you know, that is definitely not a very realistic assumption, right? As you go through your career, you're going to get promotions, you're going to switch jobs, and that is going to increase your wage. Typically, people earn higher salaries as they get later into their career. Um, and so just having one constant salary really does not capture that very well. Uh, and then going to number two, uh, the savings rate. Uh, we just had a single consistent savings rate in the original model, uh, but really the savings rate is also going to change over time. Uh, you know, you think about if you're bringing more money in, then it's likely that you'll be able to save a larger percentage of that. Um, and other things can affect that. You know, if it's a recession, uh, you might not be able to save as much, uh, et cetera. And then going to number three, thinking about the investment returns. So the investment returns, uh, we just had a single constant rate, uh, but really we know that investments, you know, they're gonna return 
uh, different risky investments are going to return different amounts each year. Uh, and so just having a single constant investment rate is not going to be able to capture that very well. Um, you know, really there should be, you know, some kind of randomness to that investment rate. Um, and, you know, ideally it could be affected by, you know, expansionary periods and recessionary periods should have lower returns during a recession. Um, so there's a lot more that we could do with the investment rate. Uh, you could really even take that even further. Uh, you could build out an entire portfolio model, uh, you know, say all the different investments that this person is investing in, um, and then calculate the returns on each one of those individual investments and aggregate those all into a portfolio uh, to ultimately determine the investment return in each year. Uh, and then going to number four, uh, the amount needed into retirement is given by a fixed amount of desired cash. We just said, you know, 1.5 million, that's how much we're going to need to retire. Uh, but there, you know, where did that 1.5 million come from? You know, really it should be driven by, you know, what are your expenses going to be in retirement? How long are you expecting to live? You know, under, you know, what different scenarios of if you live longer, how much more money are you going to need? Um, and thinking about all of these kinds of issues. And then uh, the, the, the last one, five, kind of ties in here with, with what I just said, that uh, the retirement uh, cash needed was just a totally fixed number in the model. There was nothing uh, internal to the model that was driving that, such as, you know, what if right when you retire, uh, we just hit a recession right at that point. And so all your investments have gone down just as you're going into retirement. How does that ultimately affect things? You then, you know, probably would need to keep working until uh, the market can rebound, or you would evaluate, you know, if you are drawing on the portfolio uh, while it's down, then, uh, you know, how much is that going to hurt your position overall? So there's a lot, a lot that we could consider, and you know, what seemed on the surface like a very simple problem. Uh, you know, just, oh, five keys on the top of the financial calculator and we're done, right? Uh, or a single function in Excel or a single function in Python, we're done. But no, there's there's so many things that we assumed in going to that simple problem when in reality, the real world is much, much more complex than that. There are so many different factors going on and bringing all of the things that I just mentioned into one single model, I mean, that, that would be a very massive model. Um, and so there's always a trade-off here. Uh, you know, if you just need to get a rough idea, you know, am I going to retire somewhere between 30 and 35 years? Like in that case, your model really does not need to be that accurate. And you can have all these assumptions because you don't need a very accurate result. Um, but, you know, in another situation where, uh, you know, maybe you're a large company building out a model that's, you know, making decisions for the company that's moving billions of dollars around and being off by 1% is going to be, you know, millions of dollars of, of profit difference. In that case, you know, you care a lot about accuracy and then you, you do want to build in as many uh, uh, approximations of the real world as you can rather than simplifying them with assumptions. So we're going to come back next time to talk uh, more specifically about the assumption that we're going to relax in the salary model to make it more realistic. And after that, we'll go into actually building the model out in Excel. So thanks for listening and see you next time.